In this video, I am going to give you 5 small advices which if you follow, I am confident that you will complete your PhD successfully. And watch this video till the end because the last advice is about your relationship with your PhD supervisor. And we are starting right after this short break. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Tahir and if this is your first time, please hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell to get notified whenever I post a new video on this channel every Tuesday and Friday. Now the first advice is ask questions. Now there are two main reasons students don't ask questions. The first is that they think that this question might be a stupid question and they become shy and hesitant to ask the question. And the second reason is that they think in their mind that sooner or later they will find an answer to this question. So there is no need to ask the question. Now both of these reasons are wrong because there is no such question as stupid question. If you don't know answer to anything, you must ask. And you should be asking questions even before you start your PhD. You cannot ask your supervisor to send you his resume, but still you can ask few questions in order to understand what kind of person he is and what are his research interests and whether or not he should be supervising you. Now, once you join the PhD, you think that there is a lot of time and you have plenty of other things to do. So you postpone asking questions. You think that, okay, we will find the answer. Otherwise, I will ask the question. Now, this is important that you get the answers to your questions as soon as possible. And asking questions is critical for some of the disciplines. For example, engineering disciplines. There are so many things that if you don't ask questions, you will never going to find the fine details which you need in order to excel in your PhD. Also, when you are reading research papers, there are a lot of questions come to your mind and you should be taking notes of them and then you should be asking either your supervisor or other researchers. You can send them an email and most people they reply and you will get answers to your questions. Now getting answers will improve not only your knowledge but also the speed with which you should be able to complete your PhD and not only your supervisor. You should ask questions to other uh, researchers and your even your colleagues because there are certain things you should understand and know earlier in your PhD. Now the second advice is read a lot with comprehension and take notes. Now reading is the single most important activity for any PhD student and not just reading. You should understand what you are uh, reading or at least try to understand. And one thing you should always keep in mind that scientific language is a foreign language for any person. Even he or she is a native English speaker, scientific language is a foreign language. There are a lot of scientific engineering or technological words which nobody understands or nobody uses in normal everyday conversation. So you are not alone. Everyone has to learn this. So always keep a dictionary with you. If you don't understand a word, try to uh, find out the true meaning. And when you are reading a lot, you will notice that there are a lot of simple things and very small things, but researchers, when they write them in their research paper, they try to show that it is a big achievement. Actually, it's not. It's just a matter of uh, them presenting in a better way. So it looks good. So try to improve your scientific vocabulary, find out new words, try to understand how to use those words because this will help you when writing your research papers. And now when you start reading papers, so what papers you should read first? So my advice again is that first of all, you must read the review papers, the review papers in your field of research because those review papers will give you a bigger picture of your research area. And it is important for you to understand what is the bigger picture and where do you stand with your PhD? What is the area inside that bigger picture where your PhD falls? And once you get this picture, it will be easier for you to excel in that particular area because then you will be focusing on research papers only in within that area. Now the third advice is that you must celebrate your small successes. You are not going to achieve a big uh, success every day, but there are few things you should be successful 
and then you should celebrate those. For example, I just talked about uh, getting a bigger picture. So once you get the bigger picture of your research area, that is an achievement, that is a success, that is a first step towards your PhD. So celebrate this success, put a note on your diary that you have achieved this particular success and give it a title, success one. And then you write down that today I have found the bigger picture of my research area. Then, for example, your second success would be when you find top researchers in your field of research. So I have mentioned this, how to find this in one of my other videos. Uh, you can watch that. But once you know who are the uh, top researchers in your field of research, you can put success too. These are the top researchers in my field of research. And similarly, for example, you are successful or even unsuccessful with an experiment. Uh, you can write it as a success that I was today, I was uh, successful in performing this experiment, but unfortunately the results are not what I was expecting. Something like this. So write down all your small successes in your diaries and you s celebrate them, uh, uh, become proud of them. So in this way you will feel good, you will uh, stay motivated and you will excel in your PhD. Now the fourth advice is that stay focused. Now there are two parts of staying focused. One is that when you know the bigger picture, when you know the purpose of doing your PhD, then you should be staying focused on that. For example, uh, what happens is then you start a PhD, you are on $20,000 per year scholarship and your colleague is earning 100,000 per year. So this might distract you or disturb you mentally that whether or not uh, this PhD is good for you because other people are making a lot of money and you are surviving hardly on your uh, 20,000 a year scholarship. So I have made a video about uh, this uh, that ask yourself these five questions when you are doing PhD. So watch that video. I have discussed this topic in detail there. But once you know that you have a certain purpose, you have a certain goal, uh, that's why you are doing PhD. So this will keep you focused on your PhD. So you can call this as macro focus that uh, you know what you are doing and you are staying focused on that particular uh, goal. Now there is another focus which is uh, you can call it a micro focus or everyday focus. For example, today you decided that you are going to do an experiment. So you must stay focused on that experiment. So turn off all your notifications. Facebook notifications, YouTube notifications, even turn off your uh, mobile phone and you stay focused on what you are going to do today. So staying focused is the hardest thing to achieve in this uh, social media age because there are a lot of distractions. Every half an hour, a student try to uh, look into their uh, Facebook or uh, YouTube videos, these kind of things. So I will soon make a very detailed video about how to stay focused because I have not uh, touched this topic in detail. But there are certain techniques you can use to stay focused and we will discuss this later on. Now the last advice today I am going to give you is about uh, your PhD supervisor. Do not ever complain about your PhD supervisor. Now the problem here is that most students do not understand the role of a PhD supervisor. And some even think that it's uh, the supervisor responsibility to complete your PhD. So this is not the case. I have uh, discussed this topic in other videos. And if you understand that role, you should not be complaining too much about your PhD supervisor until your PhD supervisor is really a bad advisor. And I have made a separate video about this topic, seven signs of a bad PhD supervisor. And if you are unlucky to get such a person, then instead of complaining, what you should be doing is you should be planning to take some action to get rid of that person. Now, here is very important thing you should note is that you have just one shot. You should think carefully, give yourself some time, at least six months, uh, things might go better and you might understand the true role of a PhD supervisor. And then you find another one. And first of all, you must understand what type of attributes you want to have in a supervisor and is there any person available or not. If there is one, you should communicate with that person and then you uh, change your supervisor. Only if you think that this supervisor is not a good fit or good match with you. But let me give you a warning that you have only one shot to change your supervisor. 
once you decided to change you must understand that you are doing this right because if you have to do this again then instead of doing this i would recommend you should leave phd phd is not for you because then you are the problem it's not the supervisor it can happen once that you get a wrong person but then once you decided to change it you plan to change and you change your supervisor and then you again become unhappy then it is you which are the problem you are not for a phd phd is not for you so you should better do something else it's not a joke that you every day you try to change a supervisor you can do it once if it's a really a problem it's not a match but you cannot do this twice this is the only one shot you have so be careful about this try to understand the role of a phd supervisor and then you might be okay with your supervisor so these were some of my advices for you today i hope that you like this video if so please give it a thumbs up thanks for watching and see you next time